Hi, welcome back to video four in the Social Security series. Let's get started. We're going to look at some case studies. Um, the following we're going to look at are very liberal case studies. Uh, and assume a current age of 66 for all parties, uh, using a life expectancy for 85 for males and 90 for females. All numbers are available on any kind of switching strategy and the cost of living adjustment is a 2% per year. Unfortunately, I, I want to stress that these are liberal studies. A lot of times, and I'm showing these uh, because this is what you're going to see from your uh, advisor or broker, uh, or you're going to get a lot of commercially uh, prepared reports. So you're going to see these numbers, but what I wanted to explain to you is that they're, they're very, very liberal, very high. Um, what we found most often, why this happens, um, is if they show you the numbers and they're lower, they're not as lucrative as, as, this, as the illustrations, a lot of times folks will do some different kind of preparing and, and we found uh, a lot of times a brokers or advisor would lose assets uh, that they have under management. So they're giving you this higher number and I'm just showing you uh, so we can compare the difference between uh, before and after of the um, changes in the law. So let's take a look at some of those scenarios. We're going to look at this gentleman. Uh, he's uh, single, and we're going to show prior to his uh, Social Security report, in other words, to see his options. In other words, what, as we learn through the different programs, you have different strategies. How do you actually apply those strategies? So we're going to look here at Social Security benefit at full retirement age, and this individual is 66. Um, it was $2,000 a month. We have the life expectancy again at age 85. Uh, if he filed as soon as possible, which would be basically at 62, uh, his benefit would be $548,000 over his life expectancy. But as you view it and look through it in the Social Security report, you may find that, wow, I think what I want to do is do some planning. And now the planning in this particular case brought his overall lifetime total to 593000 which is a you know, fairly a large difference. As we look at this lady, uh, she is currently divorced. Uh, her full retirement age is 66 again, and her benefit would be $1,500 a month, and her ex-spouse's benefit uh, was $1,500 a month. So for her to file as soon as possible, her benefit would be $547,000. But if she did the planning after she saw the report and, and, and integrated a spousal benefit or an ex-spouse benefit in there, our benefit increased substantially to $661,000. This study is looking at a married couple, and it's going to show us one spouse at the $2,000 a month uh, monthly benefit, and the second spouse a uh, benefit of $1,000. So this is going to take advantage of the switching strategies that were available uh, under the old rules. So if you file Social Security as soon as possible, the total lifetime benefit for these two individuals, again, remember the, the male at age 85 passing, and the, I think the spouse was 90, the wife in this case, uh, would be a total of $1.04 million, so a little over a million dollars in lifetime benefits. If they did the proper planning, they took whatever strategies were out there, and the thing we talked about earlier about the live Social Security report, is that you can see that by doing this strategy, that actually increased their benefit uh, to $1.179 million. So there's a fairly large substantial increase, about $175,000 increase in there. So that's something that should be looked at and understood well. Divorced, then widowed, or married, then widowed. So it really makes no difference in this case if you were currently married to a spouse that passed or divorce from a spouse. Uh, one of the few changes that were really not changed, they, they actually looked a little favorably upon widows, uh, is they really didn't uh, apply a lot of the same, uh, I guess, detrimental laws uh, for widows. They kind of had a little heart in Washington, which is sometimes a strange thing to ask. But what we want to do this is I will help, if this is your particular case, if you were married and, and now divorced and, and your spouse has uh, passed, or you're currently married and your spouse passed, there's a whole different rules, uh, changes in there that will be actually kind of more beneficial 
uh, in there. So I'll help you kind of navigate the rules, uh, but we're going to take a quick look uh, at, at, a, at a quick scenario. In 2015, they had the Bipartisan Budget Act. Now, this created, you know, three types of people. And, and I kind of joke when I say this, uh, it's the lucky, the not so lucky, and those totally out of luck. Now, we're going to find that, that the totally out of luck folks are the up and coming or the little bit younger boomers, and they were not 62. So if anybody was, a, you know, just turned 62 or under, they're the basically ones uh, that were totally luck. When I normally, when I do my live um, programs, and I, and I kind of bring up this slide, you know, a lot of folks will talk about politics. So I'll ask a question with politics, you know, who is better for the economy, the Democrats or Republicans? And a lot of folks will, you know, they say the Democrats are better, the Republicans are better. And, um, you know, it's, it gets kind of a little bit lively at which point. So I want to just show the difference here. What I want to do is, uh, if anybody remembers Latin from high school, um, let's take the word politics. And we're going to take a look and see, what does the word poly mean? Well, poly means many. And we're going to look at the word ticks. And ticks are blood-sucking insects. So when folks ask me, you know, Joe, which party is better? Or with politics, who's better? Uh, I normally tell them it really doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, as with basically all blood-sucking insects. So when we look at the, the, the Balanced Budget Act of 2015, the, oh, I'm sorry, the, the Bipartisan Budget Act, uh, we want to look at some background information. And it's really, I think, kind of, uh, I use the term sneaky, um, is what happened is a very, very fast legislation. It was really pushed through very quickly. Uh, the House voted, it was uh, 266 to 167. The Senate voted 64 to 35. Um, and interestingly enough, a couple of things happened. Well, number one, they really cut a lot of retirees' throats, uh, but they suspended the debt ceiling until 2017. Because I know every so often you know that we have these, um, we hit the debt maximum and uh, we can't get any more money. So I did think about shutting the government down. Everybody panics. Um, it also removes sequester spending caps, uh, which is uh, part of the debt ceiling scenario. But interesting. We learned a little bit when we looked at the trust fund uh, charts. What they did is they transferred $150 billion from the Social Security Trust Fund, which was in better shape, and they put that money into the Disability Trust Fund. Uh, the advantage there was obviously this year or in 2016, the Disability Trust Fund was running out of money, so they needed to put some money in there. But what they did is this. They obviously took the money. But how do they get the money out of there and not have the Social Security Trust Fund be depleted or uh, be hurt by that difference? What they did is what I call the sneaky. They phased out the loopholes. When we talk about the file on suspend and deeming, they really, they changed those. So that was the extra money that they would have paid out for that uh, was now sent technically over to the um, Disability Trust Fund. So that's how we actually wound up you know, kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. In this case, they did it on the backs of people that are really close to retirement. In, in some cases, a matter of a few months, have lost tremendous benefits. And you, you, what you saw from some of those, you know, scenarios, anywhere from 100 to almost $200,000 was lost uh, in income. The, the Bipartisan Budget Act really changed the... Um, the file and suspend strategy. They, they thought for whatever reason that was a loophole and they wanted to get rid of it. Uh, they did a phase out, but just so you know, uh, if you were not age 66 by May 1st of 2016, that benefit's gone. Uh, you can't, even if you were, and if you didn't take advantage of it, you can't go back in time and say, well, I didn't take advantage of it. I made the age. I want to do it now. The answer is no. You had until that deadline uh, if you were, if you didn't take advantage of it, it's lost forever, unfortunately. Uh, it also made it, there's no spousal benefits without collecting yourself, and that was with the deeming. Uh, the restricted application is going to be phased out, obviously, as the 62-year-olds become uh, age 66 over the next four years. If you were not age 62 by January 1st of 2016, it really limits the amount you can collect. The nice thing, again, we talked about that, is they really didn't go after survivor benefits, which was nice. They kind of had the heart 
uh, for some of the widows. Uh, and again, the folks that are totally out of luck, or if you were not age 62 by January 1st of this year, then you have no option for basically anything. You're stuck with deeming. Uh, you don't have the ability to file and suspend, or you no longer have any ability to file a restricted application. Here's, look, let's look at what was the impact. In other words, how bad um, was this law change uh, that really affected folks, sometimes within a matter of weeks or months of retirement, um, without any warning. So we'll look at the um, divorce lady. That was her benefit prior, $1,500, and you know, for the spouse, $1,500 as well. With the, sh with the switching strategy, she was able to collect on either or benefits, it would have been the 661. Now uh, it was reduced to 547,000. Lost income, about $114,000. So if you look at the $114,000, that's a, a lot of money considering a, a lot of folks have you know not much more than that uh, in total savings for retirement. So if they save three or $400,000 and that's the retirement savings, they lost 114, they lost a third of their retirement savings. Now, uh, married couples, what they, we looked here earlier, the husband's benefit was $2,000 a month, the spouse was 1,000. Uh, estimated lifetime benefit we had, with the switching strategy uh, was that 1.179 million, uh, with the no switching was a little, just a tad over a million dollars. So that's the difference. So when you look at the total lost income you're looking at about almost $175,000 lost. Now, that's a huge hit. So because there were two benefits available in there, there was the switching strategies. Um, basically, at this point, the money's gone. We need to find ways um, to replace that income. And that's a lot of times where the Social Security report helps and the income report show you the gaps uh, and how you can begin to uh, close them. Planning becomes important. You, you really can't take, um, you really have to get all the pieces to fit together. It's very, very important. Uh, if they don't, those, uh, those losses in income, uh, annual, you know, the uh, lifetime income is it become uh, really exaggerated. Uh, you really kind of have to plan for ways to get income, other income sources in there. Remember, it doesn't make sense to plan for Social Security without looking at the effect it has on everything. So as we look at doing a Social Security strategy, that strategy must be looked at in context of everything else to see how that thought process as far as the Social Security is concerned uh, affects those other items. Now, what happens, and, and a lot of folks, you know, say to me, you know, what percentage of income is Social Security going to replace? Now, uh, a few years back, the numbers have been changing over the years. Uh, about 36% of the average retiree's income will be coming from Social Security. Now, that's a pretty big uh, a section. Uh, you have to plan well for that. You want to make the right decisions. 21% um, are going to come from retirement plans. Now, as we age, a lot of our younger boomers are seeing less and less of the defined benefit plans, which are you know, typically your traditional pensions that you worked for a company for so many years. They gave you a benefit of a pension benefit when you retired. 43% uh, are going to come from um, personal savings and working. So when we look at the Social Security decisions and our personal savings, those are very critical that they be in integrated well. We, we, we've learned in some past slides, uh, if you're working, how much you can work and earn, uh, at what age could you start to earn an unlimited amount, uh, as well as making sure your savings picks up any of the gaps uh, with your Social Security. We're also going to start to take a look at the five risks and how they affect our Social Security earnings. This is the end of Section 4. We're going to do a quick review and then proceed on to the last section. As we recap this section, we want to review, you know, we actually reviewed some of the case studies. We learned a little bit about the Bipartisan Budget Act and the three types of people in there. We had the, the politics joke, which I thought hopefully didn't offend anyone. Uh, the new law and the givebacks, 
how important is Social Security income, and especially in the light of the givebacks, how we can uh, make up for that shortfall. Uh, must do new planning for these losses. In other words, we have to find a way to, to plug those short holes, the money that we thought we would have gotten or been surprised that we would have gotten uh, is no longer available. And again, we just basically talked an introduction of the five risks. Hi, it's nice to have you back. Congratulations on finishing part four of your video series. I'm excited. I hope your learning experience is going uh, very quickly. Again, as always, take advantage of any of the Q&A, uh, any of the reports that were being offered, uh, as well as you can always go back and replay sections that weren't 100% clear. Uh, looking forward to catching at the end of section five. Thank you.